Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about subsistence theory of wages. This theory also known as iron law of wages and given by David Ricardo and other classical economists. According to this theory, wages should equal to subsistence level. According to this theory, wages should equal to subsistence level. That means wages should enough to meet basic needs of employees such as food and shelter. For example, worker need only 500 rupees in order to fulfill his basic need. That's why according to this theory, his wages should equal to 500 rupees and should not exceed from 500 rupees. But what will happen if their wages are above the subsistence level? Above the subsistence level wages means workers are earning more. Obviously, now they will think about settling down. Or we can say that if their wages are above the subsistence level, then workers will encourage to get married and have a large family. As a result, population will increase. As population increase, labor supply increase. When labor supply increase, wage rate will fall. Eventually, at long time period, wage rate will become equal to subsistence level. But what will happen when wages are less than subsistence level? Obviously, now workers are earning less. That's why marriages and birth will discourage. Second thing, subsistence of wages was able to fulfill only basic need such as food. Now wages are less than subsistence level. That means workers are not able to get enough food. If workers are not able to get enough food, it will lead to so many disease, lack of nutrition. As a result, death rate will increase. A death rate increase, that means population fall, labor supply fall. When labor supply fall, wage rate increase. Eventually, at long time period, wage rate become equal to subsistence level. So, here we see there is no benefit of increasing or decreasing wages from subsistence level. Eventually, at long time period, wages become equal to subsistence level, but without any reason, labor supply fluctuates. That's why according to this theory, wages should equal to subsistence level. In this diagram, you can see on, on x-axis we have labor demand, y-axis we have wages, d, d, d1 are labor demand curve. Initial equilibrium point is E and labor demand is OQ and wages are OW and OW wages are equal to subsistence level. Now suppose labor demand increase uh, at long time period from Q2 to Q1 and our new equilibrium point is E1. At this equilibrium point you can see no doubt at long time period labor demand increase from Q2 to Q1 but our wage rate still are equal to OW, our wages still are equal to subsistence level because according to this theory wages should equal to subsistence level. Now we will see criticism. Fail to explain differences in wages. This theory assumes all workers will receive same wage rate. But this is not true. Wages paid to workers differ from place to place, differ from person to person, differ from occupation to occupation. This theory more focus on labor supply and ignore labor demand. This theory doesn't explain how we can increase the wages through the action of trade union. According to this theory, as the wages increase, birth rate also increase. But in some countries, we found in order to enjoy luxurious life, people keep birth rate low. Very pessimistic theory because according to this theory, wages should not increase from subsistence level. So this is all about subsistence theory of wages. I think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye. Take care.